The idea of a spherical Earth has been around for many years and was accepted due to the numerous proofs supporting it, including pictures. There are people, however, who choose to disregard all that and support a concept of a flat Earth, basing their assumptions solely on observations and conspiracy theories. Instead of trying to prove the Earth is round, let's investigate and test the flat Earth model and see if it accounts for the mundane occurrences that we've grown accustomed to. Flat Earthers believe the Earth to be a disk, with the Sun and Moon revolving around it as illustrated in this simple drawing. They claim the Sun shines light into a spot and that is how we have day and night cycles. Furthermore, this model even explains how we have seasons. The Sun moves closer and farther away from the center of the disk, or the North Pole as we know it. Example, when the Sun follows the red circle we have summer in the Northern Hemisphere probably because the sun is closer and that means more heat. It even explains the constant daylight during summer at the North Pole and the complementary seasons between the two hemispheres. So far so good, but why does the sun shine into a spot? It is also spherical in the flat earth model, so why does it only radiate in a cone, since the sun's spot doesn't reach the moon, but we clearly see it at night. Some flat earth supporters claim it has its own light source. Then how are the moon faces explained? Since this model doesn't offer any answers to these questions, we will disregard them for now. One thing that it does explain, however, is sunrise and sunset. Flat earthers claim it happens because the sun fades into the vanishing point. That is the point at which the perspective projections of parallel lines appear to converge. Looking at the 2D road, we can change the perspective to give the impression of a third dimension. Even though the sides of the roads are parallel, to give the picture depth, they converge into a vanishing point. The condition is that the perspective lines form an angle of less than 1 minute of an arc, or 0.016 degrees at the observer, which is of course very small. Let's apply this theory to the flat Earth and see how far should the Sun be to merge with the horizon for an observer on the flat Earth. So we tilt the disk for a 3D perspective and, since the model gives the height of the Sun to be 5000 kilometers, we can build a simple trigonometric model and calculate the distance. So we set theta to 1 minute of an arc and, by applying the sign, the required distance turns out to be roughly 17 million kilometers. The Sun then has to leave the surface of the Earth so the model would look something like this, or as seen from above, with the distance being 1500 times larger than the diameter of the flat Earth. So it is by no means a good explanation. Furthermore, even if the vanishing point could explain sunrise and sunset, the observer would see the sun reducing its size down to a dot, even before it merges with the horizon. Flat Earth believers have a counter-argument. The sun maintains its size due to some atmospheric magnification, because it is evident that the sun doesn't disappear into a spot, but gradually sinks into the horizon. If this picture is explained by the vanishing point theory, then because the apparent distances at the vanishing point are proportional to the real ones, then the diameter of the Sun must be larger than the distance to the surface of the Earth, which is clearly not true. Other globebusters, such as Rob here, believe the sunset to be explained by the so-called atmospheric lensing effect, due to atmospheric refraction. He tries to prove this by placing a lens in front of a camera and, by moving the paper back and forth, he shows how the drawing of the Sun seems to sink, such as it happens at sunset. So this is what his experimental setup looks like. To understand whether or not this is applicable to the flat earth, let's firstly understand how he did his experiment. We have a lens, the principal optic axis and the focal point F. We now place an object and construct its image based on simple optics principles. We proceed to add the camera on the right hand side and if we move the object farther and closer from the lens, we notice the image sinking and rising. Now I can't imagine a way this could be applied on the flat earth. Maybe something like this, which would lower the sun's apparent position. But let's face it, there's a lens at the North Pole. In actuality, even if the Earth were flat, atmospheric refraction occurs because the atmosphere is denser at ground level than at higher altitudes. To illustrate this, we slice the atmosphere into four parts and study the refraction of light as it goes through the slices. As we can see, the sun ray is bent downwards, just like Rob agrees. This, however, doesn't bode well for him because if the light is bent downwards, that means the sun's apparent position would be even higher in the sky and not lower, so it basically works against the proposed model. We've then reached what mathematicians call a null hypothesis. So the vanishing point and atmospheric lensing cannot explain sunrise and sunset on a flat earth.